The other side of the bail reform debate, I want to bring in Assemblywoman Latrice Walker. She was the lead sponsor of the bail reform bill, does not want to see changes made to it, at least not in the budget. So Assemblywoman Walker, good to have you back. Thank you, too. It's great to be back, Dan. Um, so let me begin with what you first thought when you saw this plan from the governor. First, how did you find out, and then your initial thoughts? Well, we found out uh, in the post, uh, and it was of my opinion that I said, well, why wasn't this introduced in the original budget proposal? Uh, why it didn't show up in the 30-day amendment? Why it didn't show up in the 21-day amendment? And why were we um, sort of hit with this 13 days before the budget was finalized uh, when we've been passing bail reform since 2018? A number of advocates, stakeholders, attorneys uh, mm -hmm. put a lot of work into the bail reform bill that we ultimately came up with. And I believe that to undo all of the great work where a piece of legislation is 99 percent effective in many cases, um, that basically is political negligence on our part. Um, and so uh, I'm not happy uh, yeah. about that. I circulated a letter today uh, to my colleagues uh, as we are requesting that the piece be pulled out of the budget. And I've also been on a hunger strike since Monday. I understand. Uh, until and unless it is. So, Assemblywoman, we just had the lieutenant governor on, Brian Benjamin, who said that the talks had been ongoing for quite some time. And while he understands why people may think it was thrown in, two weeks before the budget's due, these talks were ongoing. What are the communications you're having? Because he mentioned you by name, saying he is talking to you about this. Well, we have had communications within the past week. Um, prior to that, I have not spoken with the lieutenant governor or anyone else about bail reform since 2021. Um, the conversations that we're having is about um, making sure that they are not adopting the misinformation that has been uh, put out into the community about, about bail reform. One of the things that the lieutenant governor mentioned was that sex crimes was involved and people were getting DATs mm -hmm. uh, for sex crimes. And I indicated basically that in our um, negotiations, we removed sex crimes from that and they are all bail eligible. Mm -hmm. And so we also talked about the fact that crime um, has been on the rise all across the country, even in states where bail right. reform does not exist. And so um, I just want to make sure that what Whatever it is that we do is thought, um, right. is, is thoughtful, um, and it's also free of any political biases. So, Assemblywoman, are are the changes? Uh, is it are the cha are there any chances this could pass, or is it dead on arrival? Because they're not saying eliminate the bill altogether, right? They're saying make these thoughtful tweaks to it. So, is it dead on arrival, or is it open for interpretation and, and debate? Well, any conversation regarding dangerousness is dead on arrival. We know that they have implications with racial undertones. We recognize that this conversation about judicial discretion is really a conversation about utilizing uh, certain algorithms with, with discriminatory questions um, that come up. Where do you live? How long have you lived there? Where do you work? How long have you worked there? How many years uh, of education have you completed? All of those questions don't go towards a person's uh, propensity towards dangerousness, but really speaks to the poverty in their lives. And so wherever the governor's proposals talk about more resources, we are all on board with that because we recognize that investing in mental health, investing in homelessness, and investing in communities will lead right. to the outcomes that we desire. So the other, there were three things specifically mentioned in that 10-point plan, right? The repeat offender arrest and bail, the felony gun case bail, and the violent crime pretrial restrictions. Are all three dead on arrival? Well, one of the things that we had we spoke about with respect to the um, desk appearance ticket, we believe that whenever it is a police uh, officer encounters someone, um, that if they believe someone should get a order protection, that they can send that person to be booked in the rain and see a judge. If it is that someone is arrested for the second time, um, there are opportunities where that second arrest becomes bail eligible. And ultimately, right now, the governor's office can shorten the time period between the a desk appearance ticket and the actual appearance. Many times they've been given 20 days. We're saying maybe shorten okay. the time period, maybe have them come back the next day. And so those are some of the conversations that we're willing Understood. to have uh, about the changes. I only have 20 seconds left, Assemblywoman, and you said you were on a hunger strike, right? How long does the hunger strike last? 
Well, at this point, my my um, ultimate stance is with respect to dangerousness. Okay. If we can have a conversation to remove that, then you know we can go back to business as usual. Uh, ultimately, we're going to go through uh, the budget, which is next mm -hmm. Friday, April first. Uh, at this point, yesterday I left Albany. I took the train based on a little bit of lightheadedness that I'm feeling, mm -hmm. but my spirits are still high. I do a lot of praying and fasting as I'm going through this. I just checked my blood pressure. Okay. My blood pressure is still doing great, and Good. so my fight will continue and my vigor will not um, shudder. Yeah, your health is important to us as well. All right, yes. Assemblywoman, keep us posted on all things bail reform. We're interested in what you have to what you have to say, so keep us posted. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. And up.